What's up guys? So today I'm going to assemble the Bayes S100S from ZWQ. The early models all came fully disassembled, so it's quite a bit of a process to put it all together. I have heard that at some point in the future, they'll swap over to shipping these fully assembled. I do think this video will be useful to you even after that point, just to know how it works. And I'll also do a separate video of upgrading the blaster. I got this one shipped directly to me from ZWQ themselves, but you can also buy it here in Australia from Blaster Tech or in the US from Frontline Foam, and I'll put links to both of those down below. Now the first thing we're going to take a look at is the bolt assembly. I think for some of you this will come disassembled, I'm not 100% sure. Mine came assembled, but it's just two screws, one of them at the front here, holding the priming block to the priming rod and a second screw on the plunger cup holding that to the priming rod as well. From here what we need though is the bag with all the buffer paddings in it. They have supplied multiple, I'm guessing over time, as the plunger rams into the back of this. It'll squish it and you might want to swap it out for a new one. But opening up the bag, grabbing one of these out and four screws. From here what you want to do is position this on the back of the plunger cup and then put the four screws in. Just to make sure it aligns properly I'll do the two opposite each other first and then the remaining two. With it screwed in all the way it should look like this. For the next step we'll be taking a look at the plunger tube as well and have a look at the very interesting text that it says on here. Oh, now that it's all assembled, I can see they were going for a bit of a railgun aesthetic. That explains the text. If you can't tell from the footage, this is a massive plunger tube. Internal diameter is 40 millimeters. Draw length I haven't actually measured yet because the blaster needs to be assembled for me to grab that. So what we need to do now is lubricate all of the O-rings and then pop the plunger tube and plunger rod and bolt all into the blaster. For my lubricant today, I'm using an Australian brand called Inox. It's kind of a, it's not too thin, it's not too thick, somewhere in between. So what I find with lubricants for Nerf is that if you go too thin of a liquidy kind of one, they don't last very long before you have to refill them again. If you go too thick, it'll slow down the piston as it goes through the plunger tube, reducing velocity. So you want something kind of in between those two points. What I normally do is just get a finger full of the lube, Put it in both ends of the plunger tube. Smear it around in a circle so that it's on all surfaces. Put some of the excess onto the piston. Put the rest of the excess onto the plunger cup. Now pay attention to this hole at the back of the cylinder. This is the end that the plunger tube needs to go in. And the function of that hole is that when you prime the blaster, it will let off any kind of vacuum that there is in there, which can hurt performance. These O-rings on the plunger cup are kind of large, so make sure that you don't accidentally squish them out of their grooves as you push them in. There we go. So now that we have the drivetrain of this blaster together, I can actually test the air seal. So if I just put my finger over the end of the bolt and try to pull the plunger out, it's actually really hard to pull and it gets to about that point there and it just won't go any further. So that's saying that it has a perfect air seal. So from there, what we want to do is take this particular half of the blaster and put the drivetrain in. The priming block goes at the top in this kind of groove here. Plunger tube has its own little cutouts that it sits in and the plunger rod can just stay there for now. For the next step, I'm going to assemble the trigger. So it should be the trigger itself, which feels like it's made of plastic, yep. Should be a return spring and I think I only need two of these that put a spare in. So these two posts have locking ribs on one end of it. Pay attention to which end that's on and that needs to go into the blaster's shell. So this one can go here, 
You might need to grab like a pair of pliers or something to push that down with. I'm just going to use the end of a screwdriver. The second one of these goes back here and that's just a guide for the trigger. If I put the trigger in, you can see how that works. And then this spring just goes on that post and on the top of the trigger. So when you pull the trigger, it'll return. So the next part we need to take a look at is the catch. It looks like mine's already assembled, but there are two springs you just put in the top there. And there's a roller with another one of these pins that goes through those two holes there. There is a particular way this should go around in the blaster. You want the flat edge always at the back. So that when the piston is pushed back, it'll be held in place by the catch. And of course, when you pull the trigger, the catch moves up and allows the piston to move through. The only other thing to go in at the back here, or besides an adjustable stock thing that goes there later, is the spring. ZWQ have provided me with a 1.5 spring but in a later video, I'll also upgrade it to this 1.7 spring. For now, until we're ready to put the two halves of the shell together, just leave the spring hanging out the back like this. Speak of the devil, here's this rear part for adjusting the stock. This dial here hangs through the shell and from the two sides of the shell, you'll actually be able to turn that to extend or retract the stock. The next thing we're looking at is the barrel. Let me get something to measure this. Okay, so inner diameter is 13 mil. Pretty standard for a Nerf blaster and works great with pretty much every dart out there. We're looking at a 49 centimeter barrel. That's pretty long. How the barrel goes in is you simply just, for now, just sit it here. Then we need to find a little block piece that holds the barrel in place. So you can see in this block here, there is a hole in the center. A grub screw will go into that, which is adjustable then from the outside of the shell to remove or insert your barrel. So this grub screw will go in there and then it will clamp down onto the barrel. So once you have it level with the plastic, simply sits Allen key side down in this little spot here. And then once you have the shell closed up, you can fasten or release your barrel by just putting an Allen key in and turning it to loosen or tighten. Now, I think they may have got the measurements of this barrel a little bit wrong because this little slot in the side of the barrel, you'd think that's meant to line up with that grub screw to be held in place. The grub screw is here. So the grub screw is going to actually line up and tighten onto the flat part of the bottom of the barrel rather than sitting in this groove. I still think it'll work, but it would have been better if it actually lined up with that slot. For the next part, we need all these little nuts and they just go around the outsides of the blaster to allow you to secure your Picatinny rail after the shell's closed. So you just let them sit in there all the way around the shell. Interesting that they give you so many of them. For the next part, I almost called this a fire select. For the next part, I'm going to assemble the safety. So you want to take this pin here, and this is the part that actually blocks the trigger off when you have it on safe. And that's just going to sit down in this little tiny hole behind the trigger for now. The rest of the safety we assemble once the blaster's together. What we can do though is we can use this piece here to decide whether you want the bolt to hold open on empty. 
Some people would like that feature so you never accidentally dry fire the blaster. Other people, they just hate locks so they wouldn't bother putting this in. But if you do want this, what you do then is you get the other half of the blaster and it goes here. So just in the top of the magwell, you take one of these black pieces and a screw position it in like so and then simply do up the screw now you don't want to be tightening this all the way you want it to be able to freely move up and down from gravity preferably so you might have to go a little bit looser than that even Yep, so that's moving from gravity, that's loose enough. But when you have an empty mag in, that'll actually be pushed up into the path of the bolt, preventing it from going back forwards again. Now before we put the two sides of the shell together and get this looking like a blaster, to put this pin in from the back, and then put this bearing on the pin for the priming bar to slide against. So I've pushed that pin through, now we put the bearing on, and we try and get it inside of that bar, just like so. so. Now making sure none of these little nuts have fallen out, you can put the two halves of the shell together. The tricky part for some of you might be getting the spring in at the back, so just lift this open a tiny bit, feed the spring in, and then close it down. I'm just going to rotate this so that the little funny text comes out the side. Now we have some different size pins here. These ones appear to be the shortest and I, I'm guessing they probably go at the front here. So now I just have to push each pin in and then screw one of these in onto each of them. Okay, after screwing all of these into all of these, I think I have you covered. Um, so, so there's three different sizes of these posts in terms of how long they are. Short one, long one, medium one, long one, long one, and two medium ones at the back. It's definitely way better having these screw into metal posts though compared to just having regular screws going into plastic. One other thing you will have to do is at some point um, put an Allen key onto both sides of the pin and tighten it fully. I haven't done that yet. Now the safety, you can see a spring needs to go this little hole on the top along with a detent. Just like this, there's also a flat edge which will go to the bottom. What the detent will do is there's these two little holes, one on fire and one on safe. When you turn the knob, it'll actually lock in place. It might be easiest if you have the blaster up that way as you try to put it on. Sweet. So now I just need that screw. And a small Allen key. Oh wow, there's really not a lot of thread on that. So you can hear it clicking in as I turn it. Now make sure you have the next one ready before you flip it upside down. If it makes it easier, you probably don't need the detent on both sides. Probably just the side you'll be using. In fact, you don't actually need a detent at all, but just makes it more realistic. 
Okay, let's test this safety. So I can pull the trigger. Now I can't pull the trigger. And the safety is a bit tight, so I'm going to actually back it off just a tiny bit. Yep, working well. Next part we'll take a look at is the mag release. So this is a pretty simple design if you've ever used a gel blaster before. Huh, so there's no way for this to be ambidextrous. So what you do is you push this through into there, turn it over. From here you take your spring, put it in this side, push it down in there, and then you take your mag release and you push down and you put one of these screws in. I'm going to just start the screw into that first and now pushing down, tighten it. All right, just to test it, mag's in, mag won't come out, push the mag release, mag comes out. Next part, we can just put on our little flared magwell, just pushes in place. There we go. And now for a part probably a lot of you are already familiar with, just an AEG motor grip. Flip the blaster over to this side, grab this little block, put it in the slot, that's what you're going to be tightening into. Put your AEG motor grip in place. Alright, after wrestling with the AEG motor grip to get it on, grab a washer, grab your bolt, grab your Allen key, and you'll find a hole inside which you just tighten the motor grip on with. Okay, got that nice and tight. Okay, so now for some Picatinny rails. We have the top one, the bottom one, and two side ones. What you need for these are these little black screws. Come on, there we go. If any of the sides of the shell aren't squeezing together properly, it means the actual nut has moved. You just need to correct that before putting the rails in. So now we just grab this rail. It does go around a certain way. So if you put it the wrong way around, the holes aren't actually going to line up. Right, so now we just put this rail on and tighten it up. And just do the same for the top. Now for the side Picatinny rails, you want to actually grab some self-tapping screws, which are a bit smaller, because they'll be tapping into these three holes on each. Do not over tighten these or you could strip the holes. So it's when you feel it pulling up tight, that's when you need to stop. And same for the other side. Now the last thing to put on is the priming bar. I don't know if you get two of them or not, I got two. But if you only get one with the normal blaster, just put it on the side that you prefer. For righties I'd put it on the right side and for lefties I'd put it on the left. Again, do not over tighten any of the self-tapping screws on this blaster 
or you could strip the plastic. I'm just loosely holding the screwdriver so that when it gets too tight, my finger actually slips. There we go, we have the priming bars. Now the screws for the cheek rest are actually slightly longer than the ones you use for the Picatinny rails. So grabbing two of these, line it up and screw it in. One cheek rest, non-adjustable of course. Now finally, you should be able to see there are two threaded brass inserts, the back of the stock here. So that means on the other side, we just want to put in some of these screws. I think probably, yeah, the same ones that you used on the Picatinny rail. Now we have one final step, if you want to. You can add this little fake suppressor to the front of the blaster. Okay, so now that I have this thing assembled, I wanna figure out what the air volume of the cylinder is. And the best way to do that is to look at where the bolt is sitting with it closed. We know it's the third Picatinny along and then pull it all the way back. And that will get us the draw length. And the draw length appears to be 14 centimeters. Remembering before that the internal diameter of the cylinder was 40 millimeters. If that's correct, this thing has a larger air volume than any other Nerf blaster. The Caliburn's only 146 cc's and this is 175. I suppose it makes sense for a bolt action blaster to have a massive air volume though. It allows you to use much weaker springs to achieve the same velocity as a smaller blaster. Next, let's see if it actually has an air seal. Nothing. Now at the start of the video, I tested the plunger rod and that had a perfect air seal with my finger over the front of the pusher. So I suspect the source of the air leak is the O-rings on the pusher sealing with the barrel. My suggestion if you want to get a perfect air seal out of this thing is simply to upgrade the O-rings on the pusher to thicker ones. And yeah, I can definitely feel as the breech closes, there's no resistance at all to pull the bolt back. So yeah, I'm guessing those O-rings are a bit undersized for the barrel. What I can do though is chrono the blaster regardless. Hundred and sixty four feet per second, and one more for good measure. Hundred and fifty six pretty much the same as the first shot give or take Anyway guys that has been my assembly video of the s100 s bays check out the links below if you want to pick one of these up and Stand by for an upgrade video where I'll probably upgrade the pusher o-rings and put the bigger spring in See ya